welcome you today in the name of our Lord, a special welcome to any guests we have with us today, and of course those joining us on Facebook or YouTube Live. A uh, couple of announcements today. First of all, it's good to be back. Uh, unfortunately, I brought back with me a uh, bad back, um, so I'm moving a little slowly these days, uh, but it's, it's improving and hopefully in a week or two it'll be back to normal. I also brought back with me a cold, so there you go. So maybe it doesn't pay to take a vacation, I don't know. Uh, please fill out the uh, cue cards that are in the pews this morning and pass them in the offering plate when the offering is received. Uh, today is our final transition team meeting. We'll be focusing on gifts and tasks of the next lead pastor. If you haven't had a chance to join us, you may join us today at noon. Uh, this is our final, uh, final transition small group meeting, and then we'll be working on the ministry site profile. We're looking for people to help with the community garden. If you like digging in dirt, planting seeds, harvesting, fertilizing, uh, contact Chris Roth and he'll put you to work. Uh, hopefully you all got a messenger in your email. If you didn't, contact Kristen. And if you need a copy, a hard copy, there's some out here in the Welcome Center. There's also some in the PLC today. Uh, next Saturday and next Sunday, David Novak from LSSI, the Vice President for Advancement, will be with us to share ministry. You'll have uh, two special opportunities to meet with him. One is Saturday evening uh, for a light supper at 6 o'clock. The other is Sunday morning during uh, adult forum time. So please come, welcome David, and uh, learn more about the Ministry of Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. Now to speak for that today, we have Connie Frankenfeld. Uh, she's a member of the Board of Trustees of Cornerstone Ministries, and she's going to share uh, some information uh, about LSSI from her perspective this morning. So, Connie, we welcome you. Good morning. I have to be careful here because I can talk quite a long time about LSSI, that is Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. Um, but I'm not going to do that now. Uh, <clears throat> as Pastor said, next week you will have someone from LSSI come and speak about it. And I would encourage you to uh, take advantage of one of the times to hear what he has to say. I was asked to <clears throat> tell a little bit about why I support LSSI. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is, of course, the social services of the ELCA Lutheran Church in Illinois. And I believe that the church should be involved in social services. My family, uh, my mother was a big supporter of LSSI. And my, one of my aunts and uncles uh, volunteered at uh, the children's home that's outside of Dixon. So it's in the family. It's um, afraid, I'm afraid a lot of people think that LSSI ministers to people in the Chicago area. Well, they do, but they also minister in other areas of the state. There is a large, complex uh, service in Southern Illinois, especially prison ministry. Um, we have services in our area. There is senior housing in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Christian County and also in Decatur. There is a home for Prater Willie victims uh, in Beardstown. Prater Willie is an, uh, a disorder, I guess, that the people who have it 
have no feeling of getting full of food, ever. They are hungry all the time. So they need someone to regulate what food they get for their own health. Uh, there was a man here, oh, several years ago that, uh, at a gathering that had been a resident of the Prater Willie home and he had lost 140 pounds. Well, you, most people don't do that by themselves, especially if you are constantly hungry. As a member of the Board of Trustees for Cornerstone, I should say that Cornerstone is uh, a foundation that makes sure there is enough funds to keep LSSI going. There were some serious decisions to be made when the state didn't have a budget, but the foundation was able to keep them afloat. They made cuts, but they made uh, sure they were afloat. So in your bulletin today, you got one of these pretty color things. <clears throat> and it's going to ask, what's your contribution? What are you going to do about social services of Illinois? And I would encourage you to take that very seriously. One of the reasons I belong to a church as a lifelong Lutheran um, is that I can't be the Good Samaritan to everyone. I'm doing good if I can do it to the people I meet. Uh, so I belong to larger groups like LSSI, like the ELCA Hunger Fund, so that I am part of the, the larger ministry. And I hope you will pray about it and sincerely consider making a contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Also, uh, you can give a gift uh, online. Uh, just go to our website and go to Realm and make a gift selecting LSSI as the target for your gift. So you can do it through the envelope. You can also through, do it through online gift uh, on Realm. So please be generous. And we look forward to David Novak being with us next weekend uh, to share more in depth and detail about the work of LSSI. Now I invite you to stand for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word. You claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing the first four verses of hymn 210 at the Lamb's High Feast we sing.
us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Invite the children to come forward. How's everybody today? You good? Okay. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. You know what a shepherd is? No? Anybody know what a shepherd is? Shepherd is somebody who takes care of sheep. We don't know a lot of shepherds in our Time today, But one of the things that Jesus says about being his, our good shepherd is that he knows our name. So can you tell me who knows your name? Who knows your name? God knows our name. Jesus knows our name. Who else knows our name? Does your mom know your name? Uh, Dad? Dad? How about aunt or uncle? Friends? Classmates? Yeah. So lots of people know our name. And Jesus knows our name too. And the way we know that Jesus knows our name is that when we were baptized, we were given Jesus' name and our name. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus knows our name. And that means that whenever and wherever we go, Jesus is with us. And one of the things a shepherd does is keep the sheep together. And if there's a sheep that runs away or goes astray, goes out and brings them back. So wherever we go and whatever we do, Jesus knows our name and Jesus goes with us to keep us part of his flock. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our good shepherd. Always remind us that you know our name. That you love us, that you love us and, will us and will always keep us as part of your fold. As part of your fold. In, your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So come and get a bulletin and come and get some candy. One for you, one to share. Thank you for coming up. A reading from Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power <coughs> or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, 
Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And now join me reading the Psalms 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord, the Lord makes me lie down, down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who, is, who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive, him from, 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 we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's three takeaways from today's Gospel that I want you to walk away with from today. The first takeaway is that Jesus knows our name. 
that Jesus knows who we are, that Jesus loves us with an unending love. Maybe some of you have had this experience, but as a young boy, my mother, when I was playing down the block, would come out to the back porch and yell, Leonard, it's time for dinner. And of course, most often I was reluctant to heed her call, but finally I had to do it because it was indeed dinner time. Jesus knows us, knows our frailties, knows our failings, knows our struggles, knows our difficulties, knows everything about us, and still loves us with an unending love. We know that's true because as we remember our baptism, we remember that there we were named, not only our name, but with the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus knows our name and loves us, loves us with unending, unending love. Second takeaway, that being known by God, being one of his sheep, does not mean that it's a solo proposition. Rather, it's always done in conjunction with becoming part of a flock, becoming part of a community. At one of the churches I served, a retired pastor and his wife raised sheepdogs. And so they, they had a small flock of sheep which they would use to train the sheepdogs to, to herd the sheep. We are kept together by this good shepherd. We are brought together and connected with each other because he has named us but also calls us to be in relationship with each other and with him. It's not a solo flight being a Christian. It is a community endeavor and that we are brought together by Jesus' love. We are brought together by the Good Shepherd. We are kept together by the Good Shepherd. And as sheep are wanting to do, we at times stray. We at times go off on our own way. And it's that point where Jesus reaches out and brings us back into the fold, keeps us together as his people to do his work in the world. Which is really the third part of the message today. That there really are other sheep who are not of this fold, but we must bring them also. So who are those other sheep that we know that need to hear the shepherd's voice, that we can call attention to the shepherd's love for them? Oh, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's your hairdresser. Maybe it's your plumber. Maybe it's a, a member of your family. Maybe it's a colleague in the workplace. Maybe it's someone you have coffee with. Maybe it's son or daughter, godson, goddaughter. Many possibilities are out there where there are people who need to hear the voice of the shepherd to know that they are known personally by God and that they are to be part of this shepherding community that he calls us to be a part of. So we are known and loved as the good shepherd knows and loves us. We are brought together into community and we are called as part of being and making disciples that we are sharing the story of the Good Shepherd with our neighbors, 
with our friends, with our loved ones, and inviting them too to hear the shepherd's voice calling them and to know that they too are known and loved and are welcome into his flock. Amen. resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church and ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. The God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. We remember those of our community who seek our prayers, including Judy, Dan, Libby, Mary Lou, and Darlene, Anne, Jenny, Mary Kay, Pastor Florent, and Linda, Harry, Mike, Keith, Sue, and Vicki, Barbara, Debbie, John, Joanne, and Shar. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from those things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith, including Anselm of Canterbury and all who labored to help generations understand the good news of the gospel. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace with one another.
shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for the spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With his bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
This is the Lord's table, and all Christians who believe that Jesus meets us and is present in this meal are invited to commune with us today. Please follow the directions of the ushers coming up via the side aisle. You may stand or kneel at the rail as you wish. Hold out your hand for bread. If you need gluten-free, we have that available as well. Then you can help yourself to a small cup of red wine or white grape juice. When you return to your seat via the center aisle, you can drop your used cup in the baskets provided. All is ready. All are welcome.
stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.